All right. I just want to take a moment and talk a little bit about the O1 support in GitHub Copilot and VS Code. So first up, when you're using the chat interface, down below, you now have a little drop down that allows you to pick the model. So it's 4.0 by default. I can switch over to O1 Preview or O1 Mini. So I have those here now. So I can use a more advanced model if I'd like here in chat. And I'm actually kind of curious, will it be able to report back its model here? And let's do O1 Mini. By the way, there is a rate limit on O1 Preview for sure. And I hit it rather quickly. Oh, and if you want to be using this, you need VS Code Insiders right now. And then there's a wait list that you need to sign up for. It only took like a day to get approved. So I don't know if they're adding a lot of people or if I just signed up early enough, but it wasn't that hard to get access to this. Let's just ask it, what is your model? GitHub Copilot. Okay, but okay, but what GPT version? Okay, good. It knows that it's O1 Mini. That's great. I'm curious. Can you browse the web? I'm curious if this can actually do that. I haven't bothered to look and see if that's a feature yet. Obviously, it'd have to have tool support, but no, okay, it says it can't do that. Okay. So that is the chat interface. Also, if you open up a file, like in a file here. So one thing I want to point out, and that is the completions here. These are not driven by the new models. They're not even driven by 4.0. I have a separate video that shows these are actually driven by 3.5 Turbo. So when you get suggestions in line, they're not going to be that smart. I'd like to see at least 4.0 be used and maybe in the future, some of these O models, but for now they're not. So keep that in mind. The other thing you have available, I guess there's like four or five different ways to start a chat. And if I do a chat here, quick chat here, I guess the only difference is it starts it in a pop-up instead of over in the panel. In this case, though, you can see there's also a selector here. But if I do a different type of chat, which is the inline chat, the editor chat here, command I, in this case, there's no model selector. And in the research I did showed that this uses a combination of 3.5 Turbo as well as an older version of 4. And then the last thing I really want to comment on, given that this is mostly an update to how you chat right now, and a lot of the emphasis seems to be on the fact that you can get more deep insight into solving a problem or writing some code or optimizing code. I went ahead and threw some challenges at 4.0 and 01 Mini. And I just want to take a minute and point out one of the observations that I made between the two. So first up, I asked both of them to solve a problem to create a command line program that would be able to add some numbers together and add hex versus binary versus decimal. And so I threw a set of requirements at both. And then I had both generate solutions. And then I would run it and test it. And I would give them the errors if there's anything wrong. And after about two or three back and forth, I stopped at that point in time. And what I figured out was, or at least the one difference I saw was, when it came to GPT-4.0, it seemed to get stuck on its initial implementation, which was not really going to work very well. And so first up, GPT-4.0 version here, it's called Solution 3. And I think I have, this is the first one right here. Yep. So in this case, the very first thing it attempted to do was to use the BC command, which if you don't know about that, you can basically have addition happen at the command line here. I could do BC of 1 plus 1 here. Actually, I think I need to echo it. So I could do one plus one here with BC and get two, or I could do 10. However, BC doesn't support having hexadecimal numbers, let alone mixing them up. I can't even pass in hex here. And so given that I want hex to be a format that comes out or goes in, this is not going to be a good solution to the problem. And so because GPT-4 all started out here, every time I went back and forth with it, you can see it continued to just use the same BC command the whole time. Never really made any substantial changes after that first implementation. And so after, yeah, three or four rounds here, it's still using the same thing. I just stopped at that point in time because it didn't seem like, without some guidance anyways, that it was going to try a different approach. All right, so that was GPT-4.0. And so next up, I went ahead and tested out O1 Mini. And by the way, I created a new window when I was doing this, so there's no way context was being added from the solution that came before. So in the case of O1 Mini, here's the solution. It's solution 4 here. Here is the A version of this. And right out of the gate... Here's the fish wrapper. Did the fish wrapper correct? I don't remember if GPT did 4.0 did that correct or not. So I wanted to work in the fish shell. Was there a fish wrapper here? Oh yeah, the whole thing's in fish. Never mind. All right, so that was 4.0. And then for O1 Mini here, this is solution four. The first version of this I marked A. And inside of here, this is the wrapper that will basically call this Python script. So it decided to use Python, which is great, instead of using maybe a shell script. And so that's a good thing because Python is exactly the direction you probably want to go for this. It has great support for adding different types of numbers. 
So that's actually a good separation there. And then inside of the implementation, it did something good to begin with, and that was to use Python and basically to take the expression that's typed in and just evaluate it, for example, right here. And so if I want to show you kind of what this looks like, come into version A here. We'll call that maths Python script. We'll just pass in one. All right, that works. And then I'll do OX11 for hex. That'd be 17. That works. Zoom in a little bit so you can see that there. And let's do something like 0B1011. That works as well. It's all great. Basically, I take that binary, I show it, and then I also show the hex and the decimal value. So I translate between all three of those. And then I can even add a decimal number here. And I think this worked as well. Yeah, pretty much everything was working. And so then I threw the second challenge at it. And that was the ability to add support for printing out an ASCII translation. So if you have a hex value that maps to an ASCII string, I want to show that ASCII string then. And so that was where I had a little bit of trouble, but it did start to get the implementation working here all the way to the point where I came up with the D solution here, the fourth solution. If I come down here, I'll come up into the last solution from O1 mini. It's not executable. Okay. So I'll make that executable. I was just using the fish wrapper before. We'll go directly to this though. Save some time. If I do 41, 41 in hex, that should be two A's. And there you go. You can see it prints out the ASCII for two A's. Let me ask my other co-pilot helper here for some hello world message. So what is hello world? I'm just generating a test case here. <laughs> That's a good way to do it, actually. All right. So this one, if I do mass now, 0x and then pass that in. There you go. You can see it correctly actually translates that out to hello world west. So overall, I was pretty impressed with O1 mini. I guess O1 preview would be better. It actually did solve the problem. And then while I was throwing problems at it and not really explaining what I thought the issue was, it was basically addressing those problems. That said, it does have a lot of vestigial code. None of this code is necessary. It had some code that was looking to see if you pass something in quotes and it was trying to do something different and that's completely not necessary. So I could actually just drop all of this code right here and everything would work just fine. That's the only usage of, and you don't also, the other thing it didn't need to do, it doesn't even need to replace the numbers. So I get rid of that code there. And now if I try that again, you can see it still works just fine. So it has a lot of vestigial code. I didn't want to prompt it to tell it there's vestigial code to try and get rid of it. Definitely, I guess the intent would be that you would say that, though. I don't imagine that these models are designed at all to just work on their own without any human input beyond just running the code and then giving them error messages. So I was being kind of harsh here, but overall, yeah, I think the key difference I found was when it came to GPT-40, it got stuck on its initial solution, whereas ON Mini seemed to actually do a good job of evolving its initial solution, for example, to add the ASCII support and didn't really get tripped up on that. It actually did a good job of evolving it from A to B to C to D to the point where it basically worked at the end of it all. And actually, after you remove the vestigial code, it looks a lot like the implementation that I came up with. So obviously it's working through things and reasoning about things in a much better fashion. So yeah, I think that's about it. I don't see a huge difference with these features and models. It's really just gonna be, do you have some problems that are more advanced? And do you need something that will go through the steps of the process and I guess, quote unquote, reason through it? It's not reasoning, but something that can help you do a more deep analysis and not just give you trivial solutions to problems. And so in conclusion, in my opinion, these O1 models, they're definitely overhyped given they affect a very small part of how GitHub Copilot works. I really would like to see them plugged into completions to see what they can come up with, to see if they could help me write even better code, because obviously 3.5 Turbo is old. I think that would actually make a big difference to start getting completions written by something that could do a little more intelligent analysis, or at least give us 4.0 for that. I think that would make a big difference. But I think beyond that, it's a lot of hype unless you have a really nuanced problem where you need something to be very thorough and detailed about trying to figure out what's wrong and solve the problem.